you to find your way back to the channel again. How was good? How you day going? Morning, evening, night, whenever you're watching this video. But look though, while you're here, I'm about to go and check out top three places you can't go and people who went anyways because people are hard headed and they're just gonna do what they want to do anyway. But that may not be the case though. This is part 26 though by Mr. Ball. I'm not gonna do a long intro. I'm gonna jump right to the video. Yo, you wanna check out the original video? Link will be in the description below. But let's go. Today, we're gonna to look at three places you can't go and people who went there anyways. But before we get into today's stories, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you come to the right place because that's all we do and we upload two or three times every week. So if that's of interest to you, at the like button's next birthday party, please gift them a three-year supply of Radathor. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. All right, let's get into today's stories. Is it that the um the radioactive water? I, th I think it is. On Monday, May 23rd, 2005, 37-year-old John Wilson got home from a very long day at work and immediately just collapsed into a sofa. John was an oil pipeline inspector in Houston, Texas, and that day it had been extremely hot and he'd been driving around all these different job sites and he'd been out in the sun and he really hadn't had a break. And so now that he was home, he was totally exhausted and knew he should probably just go to bed but he didn't want to. He didn't want to just go right to bed and then have to get back up again and go right back to work. He wanted to unwind before calling it a night. And so he decided what he would do to unwind would be to go fishing, something he really loved to do. Normally, Beautiful. John did a lot of freshwater fishing, but tonight he decided he would do some saltwater fishing. And so at about 7.30 p.m. that night, he grabbed his fishing rod and his tackle box, he threw it in the back of his pickup truck, and then he hit the road. About an hour and a half later, he had driven all the way south to the very coast of Texas to a beach called Crystal Beach, which is right on the Gulf of Mexico. And instead of parking in one of the parking spaces in the lot, John, like he always did, just drove right through the gate out onto the actual beach. This beach actually had Which a reputation for having really hard packed sand, almost like cement, because so many people like John would drive their vehicles out onto the beach. And so he goes through the gate and he drives straight out towards the water. And although it wasn't completely low tide yet, it was making its way towards low tide. And so there was a lot of beach exposed. And so John drove for quite a while and then he parked still in the tidal zone but well away from the water. John probably figured that he would not be there long enough for it to matter because high tide was not for several hours. And so John hops out of his truck, he preps his fishing rod, and he walks out into the actual surf and he begins to fish. And it would have been very, very peaceful as there was not really anyone else down there as it was pretty much the middle of the night. There might have been a couple other fishermen nearby, but that was about it. And for a while, John probably just enjoyed the peace and quiet. He enjoyed fishing. And then after a while, John got overwhelmingly tired. Maybe it was from all the work earlier in the day out in the sun that was just finally catching up to him, or maybe it was all the moving around in the surf, getting knocked around by the water that was making him tired, mm -hmm. or maybe it was both. A but either ASMR, way, ASMR and you already hella tired. Yeah, that would that can't put you to sleep. I can I can never fall asleep in like dangerous situations though. Let me not say never, but like I, I got a cousin real quick friends. Help you got this story of fall asleep while falling asleep while driving dog that man i can't do it i almost did it once but i, I was like nope enjoyed the peace and quiet he enjoyed fishing and then after a while john got overwhelmingly tired Maybe it was from all the work earlier in the day out in the sun that was just finally catching up to him. Or maybe it was all the moving around in the surf, getting knocked around by the water that was making him tired. Or maybe it was both. But either way, John decided he wanted to take a nap before he headed home again. And so he left the surf zone, he dropped his fishing rod in the back of his truck, and then he crawled underneath his truck to take a nap. The following morning, a man who was out for a walk near Crystal Beach looked out into the water and he saw a truck was half submerged in the surf zone. And so he called the police and then the police called a tow truck and then the tow truck driver showed up to the beach and when he got there- it Wait, was let me go back real quick, my bad. Did I miss something? Why, why he didn't fall asleep in the truck or in the trunk of the truck? Not overwhelmingly tired. 
Maybe it was from all the work earlier in the day out in the sun that was just finally catching up to him. Or maybe it was all the moving around in the surf, getting knocked around by the water that was making him tired. Or maybe it was both. But either way, John decided he wanted to take a nap before he headed home again. And so he left the surf zone, he dropped his fishing rod in the back of his truck, and then he crawled underneath his truck to take a nap. The following morning, a man who was out for a walk near Crystal Beach looked out into the water and he saw a truck was half submerged in the surf zone. And so he yeah, called the police it. and then the police called a tow truck and then the tow truck driver showed up to the beach and when he got there, it was still relatively high tide. And so he had to wait until it was low tide enough that he could actually attach the chains and start pulling this truck out of the surf zone. And so finally, when it was low tide enough, the tow truck driver walked down and as soon as he was standing next to this partially submerged vehicle, he saw there was a body poking out from underneath it. And that body belonged to John Wilson. No one knows for sure what happened to John after he climbed underneath his truck. But the best guess is there. after he went- I don't think he climbed under there. Blah, that sounded so country. I did the best everything. Of, I, I think either he was hiding or somebody put him under that truck. Dog. I don't know where that came from. It was like Nelly. Or <laughs> There was a body poking out from underneath it, and that body belonged to John Wilson. No one knows for sure what happened to John after he climbed underneath his truck, but the best guess is after he went under there, he fell asleep, Did and he, he really slept do that? for longer than he anticipated. And in that time frame, even though the sand of this beach had this reputation for being really, really hard, well, after a couple of hours, his truck would have begun to sink in the sand. It would have settled into the sand. And so John, as he's laying there at some point, would have been trapped by the underside of his truck. And then from that point, either the truck just continued to settle, ultimately crushing John to death, or it kept him pinned there, but he was still alive. And then the tide came in and, and he eventually suffered. he drowned. Yeah. Either way, John's final moments must have been torture. I, I don't know. I just feel like it's more to that story. I, I'm I'm not getting it. Maybe because I know sometimes when we watch these stories, y'all let me know, let me know like yo a lot was left out, and y'all give me like a long ass paragraph. But regardless though, I do be looking forward to those because I do be needing that, needing that information. But just going off of this story, if legit, what we just got from this story, if that's legit, what happened? I I, I couldn't even sit here and lie to you. Like I feel act like I feel bad. I couldn't. I was trying to find it. If you saw my YouTube reactor face. But I was like, it ain't in there, nigga. <laughs> I could find dog. That nigga hiding in the brain somewhere. He said, no, nah, over here. No, nah, dog. Nah, right. Stop playing. But no, for if it for real, though, I'm not gonna ugh, Damn, I feel like it's more to that story. I'm not gonna lie to you. Rest in peace, though, dog. John's final moments must have been torture. Man, why would you? Sevnica is a gorgeous town right in the heart of Slovenia, situated right along the Sava River, which is one of the longest rivers in Europe. The section of the Sava- Stop, oh, let me go back, dog, dog, playing in my head, no. Sevnica is a gorgeous town right in the heart of Slovenia, situated right along the Sava River, which is one of the longest rivers in Europe. The section of the Sava that flows past Sevnica was a popular destination for kayakers and canoeists up until 2008, when a hydroelectric was dam was built across it. Canoeists that was past Sevnica was a popular destination for kayakers and canoeists up until 2008, when a hydroelectric dam was built across it creating a sort of dead end for anyone trying to go through that section of the river. They would have to stop at the dam, get out, walk around, and then pick up the river on the other side, or that would mark the end of their trip that day. In 2008, while this dam was still under construction, the mayor of Sevnica, who was in favor of the construction of this dam, he understood that this was kind of a bummer for the people in town. While the dam itself was going to provide more electricity for the town, it did kind of end an era. And so he decided he would organize a final trip I down the it. Sava River past the dam while they could still go right past it. And he was calling this trip the final descent. And so he went all around town asking people if they wanted to come. And he finally recruited 27 other people to come with him on this final trip. And so a few weeks later on July 3rd, after all preparations were made, the mayor and the rest of his crew, they made their way upstream to this loading area where four canoes have been set out for them. And the staff people 
people that had actually provided these canoes, they offered the group life jackets. And virtually yeah, everyone enough. in the group turned it down. It. It's unclear why they turned down the life jackets, but one could guess that, you know, the river itself was incredibly calm and they were not expecting to be on the water for very long. And so they just decided they didn't need one. And so after all 28 people got into their canoes, seven people per canoe, they pushed off the shore and they began their slow trip down the river. And the mayor had actually hired a photographer to come along with them to document their journey. And so as soon as they take off, the photographer is looking around, taking pictures and filming. The weather was beautiful and the water was calm and everything was just going really, really well. But about 15 or 20 minutes into their journey, they turned this corner and they got a clear view of the dam, which was about a thousand feet away from them at the time. Now, the dam was not done yet, but it was pretty close to being done. And so the actual structure of the dam, it was built. And so even from a thousand feet away, it was very obvious to tell that up ahead, there's these big cement archways where the water flows down over the dam. No, exactly. Uh, real quick. Because he said it wasn't done, but that was after we got all everything of how the mayor prepped everyone, set up a team, blah, blah, blah. Are they all, or maybe I missed it, ish go over my head sometime, I'm a human, I'll see when I edit it. If not, though, basically what I'm asking is, did they know this as well ahead of time? Like, okay, it's not done, but we can still do this. Because only, the part I remember, let me go back real quick, the part I remember is basically they were aware of it, that it was built there because of the, it, it for his help. But also, it was an inconvenience because now we got to, oh, man, we're lazy. We got to take a little more extra time to get up and go around and, and carry the kayak and X, Y, Z. All right. I'm, I'm going to go back real quick, but I'm going to edit it out. Actually, no, I'm not. I don't feel like it. Up ahead, there's these big cement archways where the water... And so the actual structure of the dam, it was built. And so even from a thousand feet away, it was very obvious to tell that up ahead, there's these big cement archways where the water flows down over this dam. And the whole group pretty much immediately saw they had a problem. The plan, according to the mayor, had been they would get to this dam, but on the left side of the dam, there was going to be a strip of waterway that had not been blocked off yet. Because when this dam was complete, it would completely obstruct the river side to side. But because it wasn't actually done yet, the construction crew had told the mayor that, yep, the left side, there's going to be an area where you can basically just casually go right past. You won't go down the dam. It's totally safe. But here this group is on the water looking at the dam and even from a thousand feet away, it was obvious there was no side way to get around the dam. You clearly had to go through the dam or you had to get out and go around the dam. Now the river was moving very, very slowly. There wasn't a strong current. And so there wasn't some urgent more. decision that needed to be made about what they were going to do. The group intuitively knew no that the right choice here is to, you know, go to the side, get out of your canoes and either go around or just end the trip right there. But the mayor and a few of the other people in the other canoes got the idea that hey why don't we just go over the dam i know we're not supposed to and the construction the mayor crew explicitly said don't go over the dam it's extremely dangerous but from the looks of it it doesn't look that bad and truthfully it did not look too bad this was not some enormous dam with some huge drop off it was actually a pretty small dam where the water kind of went down this fairly small embankment that was maybe 10 or 15 feet long and at the bottom of this embankment was some semi-rough water but overall it just looked like it might be kind of fun to go down this dam like you'd be going down a slide with low-key angle i did look kind of fun i wouldn't did it but yeah it did look kind of fun all it just looked like it might be kind of fun to go down this dam like you'd be going down a slide with your canoe and so the mayor was really keen on doing this he well, made let it the mayor like do it, it was be fun it was going to be an adventure and so before long three of the four canoes were fully on board with the idea of just going over the dam the fourth mm -hmm. canoe that was not prepared to go over the dam had the photographer in it and they said you know we're not comfortable with this but we'll pull up next to the dam and we'll just film you guys going over the dam Damn, it'll be really cool. And so after making their plans, I'm, I'm gonna go over there on boat full real quick. <laughs> I'm, I ain't going down there, dog. Give <laughs> me the fuck off of here, dog. And I get it. You can say it's all hindsight, but no, I'm telling you, I'm annoyed. It. I'm always annoyed, it, dog. I, I, would, I know I would have. I know I would have not done it. And we'll just film you guys going nah. over the dam. It'll be really cool. I'm and so after today, making yeah. their plans about who was going to do what, the four canoes continued down the river. And when they got about maybe one or 200 feet away from the entrance to this dam, the fourth canoe with the photographer 
pulled off on the left side of the river, they got out and the photographer lifted up his camera and he began filming the other three canoes as they made their approach into the dam. Now, the video from this photographer that was released to the public, it shows the first of these three canoes actually going into the dam. And you see these seven people on this canoe, they're kind of happy and excited looking. They have nervous anticipation, like they're about to start a roller coaster or something. And they're making their way into this dark section inside of the dam. They're basically going through the gates of the dam where they're gonna go down this embankment. And as they go into the darkness, as you begin to lose sight of them, you see the back end of the canoe suddenly pops up because now they're going down the actual dam itself. They start sliding down and then you hear someone in the canoe start to scream and then it goes completely silent. And then the video just ends. That canoe, right after it slid down that downslope, it would reach the waters below, but the canoe would capsize, throwing everyone on board into the water. And these seven people, they didn't even have a chance to catch their breath nope, before they were it. sucked under. Not only because the water was rough at the bottom of the dam and kind of was churning and pulling them under, but also because this is a hydroelectric dam. And at the bottom of the dam, underneath the water where they were, were all these big openings to underwater tunnels. The water where they were, were all these big big openings to underwater tunnels. And these tunnels functioned like vacuums. It pulled water Damn. down inside and then ran the water past a turbine, causing it to spin, and that would generate the electricity. That's what the dam actually did. And so after the water was pushed past this turbine, it would be jettisoned out somewhere else downstream. Now, even though this dam was not fully operational yet, these tunnels and the turbines at the bottom you know, of them, they are, were operational. I knew it. So as these seven people are dumped into these wow. incredibly dangerous waters and they're getting pulled down towards these tunnels, the other two canoes, they have no idea what's going on with this first canoe. And so they just continue on and they go over the dam. The second canoe that went down the dam, they also capsized at the bottom. All seven occupants were thrown out and they were sucked down underwater almost immediately. So it's both four the not third saying canoe that? that went over the dam, they did not capsize and so after they cleared the dam and kind of paddled away they began looking around for the other two canoes that should have already been down there and there was nobody out in front of them and so they turned around thinking maybe they're closer to the dam and they don't see anyone but they see one of the canoes is completely flipped over and the other canoe has been broken Damn. apart in the churning waters right at the base of the dam and they see the wood from this canoe just getting tumbled around and so this third canoe immediately turns and tries to paddle over to the base of this dam to try to start pulling people out of the water but when they get over there there's no one there the 14 people that had been in these two canoes they're gone. Ultimately, 13 of the 14 people that fell in the water that day would perish, and one of the fatalities was the mayor. Rest the only peace. person who survived who fell in the water was actually the mayor's wife, who by some miracle managed to swim out of the grasp of these tunnels under the water and made it to shore. Over the next several Damn. days and weeks, police divers were able to eventually find all 13 bodies, one of which had traveled 25 miles away to Croatia. No information was given about the state of the bodies when they were found and so we don't know if having been sucked down through these tunnels and forced past these underwater turbines played a role in their death all the public knows is that all or most of these 13 people were sucked down into these tunnels and then they died man what the hell and now the title of that last one sounds scary we got a quick question quick. for me. the happiest place on earth Full transparency, this next story was oh, pretty difficult Disney. to put together because the details of what actually happened to the victim mm. are just really difficult to decipher. And so I think I've been very thorough and I've done a good job describing what happened, but I'm willing to accept it if I'm not right and this is actually inaccurate. And if you, you think you I am, it. feel free to let me know in the comments. With that said, here we go. In 1974, 18-year-old Debbie Stone landed what she considered to be an amazing summer job. She was hired to work at Disneyland in Anaheim, California. Her specific role was to be a hostess at a brand new attraction called America Sings. Disney had basically converted an old carousel, which is a ride that spins around in a circle, they had converted it into a rotating stage, and they put up partition walls all along this rotating stage to create six 
distinct stages on this rotating stage. Oh, no and so like on each is. of these six stages were different sets of these robotic animals that played different songs about America. And so the way this would work if you were in the audience is you would walk into this theater that looked like a single theater with one stage right in front of you. Oh, but really what you were looking at is one of the six stages. And so the audience would sit down, they would see one of the acts, they'd see one performance on one of the stages, and then the stage would rotate. And so the audience would remain in the theater until all six stages had rotated in front of them and played their two to four minute long act. Debbie's job at America Sings was at the beginning of these shows where the audience would watch all six acts, she would go up before the very first act, she'd go on stage and she would greet the audience. And then the show would start, it would oh. filter through all six of the stages, and then Debbie would get back on stage and she would say goodbye to that group of audience members. It was a simple gig and Debbie seemed to like it. And so on July 9th of that year, which was nine days after this attraction had opened, and so it was nine days after Debbie had started her job, Debbie was asked to come in for an evening shift. And so she left her house and she made it out to the attraction at about 10 p.m., which was right at the start of a show. And so she went right inside, she hopped on stage, she greeted the audience, and then she left the stage and the show began. And so over the next 30 minutes, all six of the stages performed their acts. And then after the sixth act was done, Debbie dutifully climbed back onto the stage. She said goodbye to the audience. And then as that audience was leaving the theater, she turned around and walked towards the back of the stage she was on. What happened next requires some additional explanation. Each of the six stages that made up this attraction had a fairly tall back wall. And behind each of these six back walls that were kind of in a ring was the center of the actual attraction. And in the center was this circular, fairly tall storage room. This storage room did not rotate. It was stationary. The stages and their respective okay. back walls, they rotated around this storage room. The gap between the so outside of the storage room at house. any point around it and the inside of the back of the back wall was maybe a couple of inches. It was pretty narrow, but it was big enough that a For person a in okay, theory could my bad, Mr. Baller be taking me there. My bad, uh, let me see, let me go back a bit. Okay, I get it. I get it. I get and it. the inside of the back of the back wall was maybe a couple of inches, it was pretty narrow, but it was big enough that a person in theory could get stuck back there. So it was a real hazard. Okay. However, mm. Disney did not put any specific safeguards in place to prevent their staff from intentionally or unin- Fuck, I know where this is going. So she mistakenly walks into that and then it gets to rotating, huh? rotating could be wrong any specific safeguards in place to prevent their staff from intentionally or unintentionally going into this space they just told their staff to not go back there and be careful so back on july 9th after debbie has said goodbye to the audience and she's walked towards the back of the stage she's on uh. she decides to move from the stage she's on to the adjoining stage and when she does that she either trips or falls or something happens which causes her to fall into the narrow space between the two back walls of the two stages she was on. And so she falls through that gap and then gets wedged between the outside of the storage room and the back of one of the back walls. She tries to pull herself up and pull herself out of the space, but she realizes she's stuck. And so she starts to panic and she starts screaming for help. None of the staff hear her or they don't recognize that this is a real call for help. And this new wave of people that are coming in, the new audience, louder, they're all louder, talking loudly. There's man. music playing. They don't really hear her. And anyone that actually did hear her calling for help, they would later say they thought it was part of the show. And so as Debbie is screaming bloody murder, she cannot get out of this gap, this narrow gap she's stuck in. These stages, they start to move because the show is gonna start. And because Debbie has nowhere to go, when the stage began to rotate, Can she, she got forcibly dragged and twisted and rolled and her body began to contort and bones started to break and she was forced to continue moving through this narrow space because the stage was just gonna keep on going until it reached its next position. 
And so finally, after it dragged her all the way to its next position, Damn, Debbie. Debbie didn't die. She was grievously injured. She probably had dozens of broken bones, but she was alive and she's still totally stuck and she's screaming with every ounce of energy she has. But again, the audience, even though they heard her screaming, Give me one miracle they stories. assumed it was part of the show. And apparently the I staff also heard her screams and convinced themselves it was just no big deal. And so two to four minutes later, when the act was complete. It's like I so, I, I so angrily do want to be mad at the audience, but, but at the same time, it's like, man, let's be realistic. Now that this would be really used in hindsight. I'm going to see a show. Man, I, I could I can honestly see me also in the audience as well. Like, what is that? Y'all hear that? Like, oh man, they really setting up for this mug or something something like that. I I don't know. I could really see me brushing it off. However, though, the hear, hearing the word help, if she was actually saying the word help, I'm not gonna lie though, especially if I'm at Disney, I'm gonna think like, all right. I already heard hella conspiracy shit about this place. All right, now I ain't gonna go there. I'm like, all right, <laughs> no. But for real though, someone screaming help, I, I would I think I would legit assist to that. I mean, I think I would begin to assist. I, I like to believe, I, I think I would, hearing somebody scream help. But again, the audience, even though they heard her screaming, they assumed it was part of the show. And apparently the staff also heard her screams and convinced themselves it was just no big deal. And so two to four minutes later, when the act was complete, the stage began to rotate again. And so Debbie again is rolled and contorted and crushed and dragged and smashed and broken as the stage again rotates to its next position. And she's still- The staff are thinking a little different now. That's a different perspective. All right, you, you so, I'm taking it. If you're in that staff room, I'm taking it. You can hear it a little more clearer, obviously, because like you said, and don't know if this is actually what happened. Like they heard it, but didn't think anything of it. I'm sorry, but that, a cry for help, someone screaming. What the fuck? It's rolled and contorted and crushed and dragged and smashed and broken as the stage again rotates to its next position. And she's still not dead. She's screaming out for help no one is coming to help her. And so the entire show would play out with the stage rotating through all of its sections. And then finally, at the end of the show, when one of the audience members alerted the staff that, hey, you should really go check out that screaming we heard. Thank you. And at that point they went for a look and they discovered Debbie and she was very obviously deceased. Disney would pay a Rest small Debbie's settlement Debbie. to Debbie's family. And small. then they would put up a number of safeguards on the America Sings attraction to make sure some Something like this never happened again. So that's gonna do it, guys. If you found the secret in today's episode, let us know in the comments. Even though the money don't matter, ain't gonna bring her back. But still, I wanted I wanted that one to be more of a hit hit the company pocket situation, so they'll feel it. That's what I wanted one of those. But I mean, let's be honest, it's Disney. Why is there so many dark stories around? Let me wrap this up. Hold up, dog, real quick. So before I contradict myself, but any, anyway, before I get to that point, why is there so many dark stories revolving around Dis Disneyland, Disney World, Disney? The name itself is so many, man. Like it's like, dog, it's legit. I ain't about to get into that. We're not watching one of those videos. But on the other hand of that, though, to contradict though what I was about to say. So if you notice, kind of at the beginning of the story, I was kind of cheesing a bit, obviously, because I ain't gonna lie. Is is he was like explaining what was going on in the park and everything? I was like, oh. It just sounds amazing even though i've been to think been to theme parks so i do understand how they work but this since a kid i always went to, go to disney it was like my dream and i had cousins around me who had money used to go but little sob story growing up, growing up in the hood we didn't have no money so we couldn't go never could afford it we could i wouldn't had disney channel we had disney movies in the house like we all right eat enough of that whatever right so I, I, I always love when hearing people tell them stories about Disney, like going to Disney World. I was like, oh, that's on fire. So that's why I was like, all right, I was kind of cheesing a bit because even though I hear so many dark stories around Disney, yes, I am definitely going to take my kids to that month because I oh, wouldn't get to the age because I've always wanted to experience it. But either way, go though. back to the story. I'm just talking age at this point. Actually, never mind. I'm going to go ahead and get up out of here and enjoy my night. You do the same thing, though. Enjoy your night, morning, evening, day, whenever you're watching this. Do me a favor, click that like button, though. I appreciate it. Hey, I'm out.